lack of soft skills to support delivery of care. So we can tell what's wrong with you, but we aren't trained to tell you how or what is happening to you. There's a disconnect between regulatory bodies, a low standard of care, and little focus on value delivery. So this looks like a section that's on kind of oversight. So one of the key points that we gave here is lack of credible data. For example, at the moment, there is no accuracy on how many Nigerians we have in the country. Um, depending on which source that you look at, you keep getting different data. So because we don't have credible data, it's difficult to plan correctly. And therefore, it's difficult to allocate correct resources when we don't really know where the resources are needed. We kind of tried to drill down to figure out why we're having this issue of inadequate access to insurance. Um, themes around uh, the insurance policies, the insurance premiums are a bit too expensive, there is poor education on actually what insurance is, a lot of people don't actually know what insurance is and what it's supposed to achieve. The problem here is that we don't have speech, especially, I can't say about this as a request, especially evangelical Christianity, it's like, you are here in Jesus' name, you are strong, you are not weak, you shall not die for you to declare the works of God in the land of the And so all of those things now, instead of spirituality to become a component of healing, it now becomes in opposition to healing. Now, across the world, I did a mental health first aid training in America last year. And it's just three day training. Now, that's the kind of thing that many pastors across the continent should involve themselves in. Because many congregants have a trusting relationship with their pastors. And so if their pastors understand the first thing that you tell somebody who is suicidal, somebody who is depressed, somebody who is with anxiety, then the pastor becomes a very crucial primary point of healing. So I always say that because religion is such a powerful part of our reality here, it's so much of a waste of time to ask people to throw away religion. My name is Emily Sheldon and I serve as the Director of Health Innovation for Impact Hub Lagos. We're really excited to have our first Health Innovation Roundtable today, bringing together stakeholders from all different areas of the health ecosystem, industry, academia, government, startups, to have a conversation about how to improve health outcomes through the lens of entrepreneurship here in Lagos and throughout Nigeria. Our health innovation work first started with one of our sister organizations, Impact Hub Accra, who started this work two and a half years ago. They saw that health entrepreneurs faced unique barriers that weren't happening in other sectors. There was a different vocabulary, different level of education, and different risk associated with going into health entrepreneurship. And so we saw that there was special mentorship that was needed. have an understanding that as an impact investor, we are um, differentiated from the typical PE investor in that we are looking to provide patient capital. So your typical PE investor is looking to invest and exit within three to five years. Whereas in the healthcare sector, it takes a lot longer to realize returns. So you have to be prepared to be in, in that investment in the long term, for the long term. So a lot of our entrepreneurs come to us and think that you know, would be a typical fee investor and like our demands on them would be would be very strenuous, would be there'd be a lot of pressure on them to uh, deliver returns in a certain time period and that's really not the way we work. Um, we, we look at ourselves as partners, not just investors. So there there's especially in this sector that traditionally hasn't received a lot of uh, interest from private equity. Hi, my name is Sholakwe Hammond and I'm CEO and co-founder of Impact Club Lagos. Today is our first anniversary and we're super, super excited and we're marking it with the Health Innovation Round Team. And this is because health is extremely important to us. It's one of the pillars uh, for uh, one of the pillars of impact that we're looking to explore and support as a hub and we intend to do many more programs in this space. It's been a wonderful day. We've had stakeholders come in from all the different parts of the ecosystem and we're hoping we can turn this into a, into a study, a healthcare ecosystem map, and to dive deeper into some of the issues um, that are troubling us in this space.
run a company called Dr. I Unlimited. Um, at Dr. I, we are focused on providing the healthcare infrastructure um, in a way that um, does not um, exclude any of the workforce. Uh, our primary target is trying to help private practitioners set up private practice without having to incur certain costs. Uh, we know how difficult it is to access financing for healthcare um, and we're trying to see how providing the physical infrastructure can help us uh, increase access um, by establishing more private practices and seeing how to share facilities in order to achieve this goal.